All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, all right, so this has been kind of a communication that I had um, with some fellow believers last night. Um, one of the things that come up, and this is this is kind of coming alongside well, what separates us from all of these religions, all of these denominations, and one of the things that scares me the most is religions such as Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormonism, you know, stuff like that. <clears throat> and I often wondered what keeps them in there and what is it that is the de deciding factor in all of this. Um, and yeah, we still have all kinds of religions, Catholic religions, uh, Baptist um, I call it the Baptist religion, uh, Calvary Chapel religion, you know, I can keep going on with all kinds of divisions within the Christianity sect. Um, and I think it's so very interesting, um, how all of this plays out and, and how even in heaven and hell testimonies, you'll find that people from these religions, um, such as Catholic, especially Mormons and Jehovah's, um, also Baptists, uh, Calvary Chapel, a lot of them end up, uh, there are many who end in hell because the road, the road to Christ is narrow and, and the road to hell is wide. So, why is it that so many people end up in hell? Um, especially Christians, too. I mean, there's just a lot of them just walking, you know, praising the Lord, all of this stuff, but they just walk straight into hell. So, is what I'm saying true? And I often had to ask myself that question, too. But the thing is, is that what God showed me is that repentance is key to all this. Um, and when we repent, when we obey the Lord Jesus Christ, when we do these things, uh, we do it in an act of faith, in an act of love. We love the Father, we love God, and all these things. Um, so, repentance leads to salvation. Obedience leads to um, deliverance and deliverance and 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 um, let's see so repentance leads to salvation uh, obedience leads to deliverance and submission leads to the infilling of the Holy Spirit so when we submit ourselves we are submitting our will our free will to God. We're saying, God, I get it. I'm giving it all to you. Use me how you want today. That's submission. So there are rules in the spiritual realm that lead us away from evil and demonic oppression and depression. Uh, this is why God has set forth the Ten Commandments and other laws of old, because God knew that if we violated those laws, we risk being possessed by evil, including sickness and disease, which also comes from the devil. Um, which is kind of ironic, because I don't get sick very often, um, if at all. And I found myself getting less sick the more I'm walking with Christ. And, and it's a very interesting relationship, and if we follow God's love for our life, if we follow the things that God tells us to do, the Bible tells us how to re maintain a healthy body, you know, so part of that can be fasting and praying. Um, once children of God, uh, once uh, we become children of God through Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Spirit fire, we are then protected from these evil spirits. Uh, more so if we get attacked in any way, those who have 
feared God and obeyed his son Jesus Christ strive for repentance with the guidance of the Holy Spirit who convicts us uh, they will be delivered uh, uh, convicts us and they will be delivered so the victory that comes from Jesus Christ shed blood is that which we call upon in the name of Jesus when we need deliverance faith is repentance and repentance is faith so one of the things people don't understand is that people of the Old Testament they feared God's laws because they knew if they went outside of God's laws they would be attacked but because we are human beings and we have trouble maintaining this uh, this level of walk we need both the spirit of truth and both um, the mercy of God to help us start over and Christians are not uh, by any means um, removed from the same problems as everyone else in the world we all are under the same spiritual um, spiritual laws so and a lot of people ask well I believe in Jesus you know uh, I shouldn't be attacked by demons well yes you can be attacked if you are going outside of God's will or if something violates your will that impregnates demons into you uh, such things can be rape incest things like that and that passes on demonic activity into your life uh, that's why when we have abuse in families um, why people get so affected is because they're constantly bombarded with witchcraft they're constantly been being bombarded with destruction um, and that hardens the heart and when we when it hardens the heart it makes us less like children of God or it makes us it makes us not less like children of God but it makes us less innocent within our, ourselves and so having a lack of innocence hardens our hearts and makes us less susceptible to be be able being able to communicate with the Holy Spirit so and notice that I said faith is repentance and repentance is faith well repentance leads to salvation so if you have faith in Jesus you are already repentant you're saying Jesus I'm sorry please forgive me you know I turn from my sins basically repentance is to change your mind to, to change to change you're basically saying I'm not going to look back at Sodom I'm going to follow the path that God has told me to follow um, and it's the ones who look back that die so those who are living in sin die those who get into sin die um, and and our dreams are no different if we treat our dreams the same way we treat the world that's we gotta we gotta keep ourselves as pure as possible and the devil will look for any entry point that he can possibly get uh, so make no mistake that our uh, mental state our heart and our physical actions all re should be representative of godliness and if something gets soiled and contaminated we we need to um, pray the blood of Jesus and to ask God for mercy to deliver us from evil um, so what God has shown me after uh, talking with a sister of Christ who has been a Jehovah's Witness then later a follower of Christ uh, and born of the Holy Spirit explained me the power of God's perfect love she said that Jehovah's Witnesses essentially tell people to stay away from sin avoiding being attacked by demons however what God has been showing me lately is that the laws of Moses has uh, and uh, lately has uh, was sorry however what God has been showing me lately was the laws of Moses and how the people followed the laws the, the law and did not get taken over by the enemy by obeying God we walk in faith so it is and you'll find this over and over and over again you know you'll find that the people who were walking with God and walking a straight and narrow path 
we're less susceptible to being overtaken by the enemy. Um, but it was like people like Saul, who, the, who rejected the ways of God, even though the Spirit, I'm sure, was convicting him the entire time. Um, Saul, when he was king, he decided to worship himself by erecting idols and other things like that, which just greatly displeased God, and it actually infuriated him. Um, so, to no ends, you know, basically God removed the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Grace, from him, and so he was overtaken by demons. And the only way to get out of those that demonic oppression and depression was through uh, through worship in the Holy Spirit. And so da whenever David would play music for Saul, he would um, he would feel relief from from the demons. And as Christians, when we're around people and we are um, worshiping and praising God, it creates an atmosphere of of holiness and that holiness demons cannot um, demons cannot reside where the Holy Spirit is it's like it's it's painful for them whatever it is it's just painful so when we worship and praise God it it's it's inviting the Holy Spirit to indwell in us and God is a spirit so we have to worship God in a spirit um, and so, so by worshiping God in the spirit, we then invite God and his power to surround us and, and the devil can't attack us in that way. It doesn't mean that we're like done and over with. It's, it's just a way for people to, um, to get the fire started, you know? Um, so yeah. And, and Jesus is a big part of this. You know, we have to constantly, we're always asking Jesus to forgive us, to forgive us of our sins. Um, it's, it's a walk. It's, it's not something that we do just, you know, once and that's it. Because I tell you that there's a lot of Christians out there who call themselves Christians and who are severely depressed and oppressed and are demon filled. Um, and there's no doubt they are, um, but it's because that they're not walking in a in a path of of, of um, repentance, righteousness, godliness that causes this. And and sometimes, let's say they were violated, there's something there's a demon that just latched on to them, you know, and that's part of the spiritual realm. We are still subject to the spiritual realm but God gave us an out which is Jesus Christ he says whoever calls upon uh, calls upon by the son of Jesus Christ you know when they need help they will be delivered you know and so just because you you say Jesus God you know please help me help me you know does not stop us from how do I say this? Um, this not is not the end all be all of you know of just being saved. It's like it's like when we when we are re truly repentant and we're walking in Christ, it's a path that we w that we need to start from birth all the way to death, and it continues on for eternity. And even when we get into heaven, there's a level of, of purification that goes on. Um, you know, we are still being sanctified. Um, we, we get sanctified here, we get sanctified in heaven. Um, but we're constantly washing the garments, our garments, on a daily basis, morning and night. Not just once, but we're constantly trying to... We're living in the world, and we're not of the world, so we're heavenly... Uh, beings and so yeah we're going to be defiled by by demonic entities but that defilement should not stop us from walking in righteousness 
if that makes sense. Um, so let me be clear that Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses who practice their religion um, will not enter the kingdom of God because they have perverted God's word. Um, God even said uh, uh, his people die for a lack of knowledge. So when man goes uh, goes so when we go to man and written words on a page translated interpret, interpreted by man, we risk internal hellfire, not for for what division of religion we are in, but for the lack of knowledge surrounding God's laws. <clears throat> um, however, when we have a solution, and this solution, uh, and the solution God had for us. Uh, is the Holy Spirit of truth, sorry, is the Spirit of truth, which is, who is also the Holy Spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit is, uh, and always will be around us. It is the conscious uh, consciousness that we have, telling us right from wrong, uh, leading us back to Jesus Christ, who is always walking the straight, uh, uh, who is always walking the straight and narrow. Um, so let me just kind of touch on this for a second. Like people, you know, you can be in all these so-called religions and you can love this God that you love, um, or you think you love, but if you truly love God, you're going to obey him. You're going to, to, um, to submit to him, to submit to his will. But God said that, no one can, uh, Jesus said that no one can come to the Father except through me, through Jesus Christ. And so Jesus Christ then sends the Holy Spirit to, to, um, to cover us with the, the, the Holy Spirit fire. Um, it's, it's, a uni it's very interesting that the way to God is through Jesus Christ. And, and yeah, you know, a lot of these religions, you know, even the Baptist religions and the Catholic and the Protestants, they miss it. They miss the, the message of repentance and you miss the message of the Holy Spirit. Um, they love Jesus. They put, they plaster him all over the walls. Um, they, they put crosses everywhere, but they don't focus on the spirit of truth and they don't focus on, on righteousness. Uh, and repentance and all these things. <clears throat> so the reason why there's so many heaven and hell testimonies of so-called Christians of all denominations who end up in hell, many of them included but not limited to uh, all divisions of Christianity, Baptists, Calvary chapels, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and so on, enter hell for these two reasons, a lack of repentance and are not filled with the Holy Spirit fire, which leads us, uh, which leads us to the truth, not error. Man is prone to error, but God is not. Without the knowledge of truth, i.e., the Holy Spirit, and without uh, true repentance, we will all end up in hell. So that's what it means that when it says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, no one enters the, uh, to the kingdom of heaven. Uh, without Jesus and the path that he's walked. So we also have to walk the same path that Jesus has walked. And if we're not walking that path, then we walk on a, on a wide path, which is to hell. So yes, for those trying to save themselves by the letter of the law is fleeting. Uh, they do not have the love of God in them. Uh, that is the Holy Spirit that leads them to all truth. Jesus and the Holy Spirit leads us to perfect, to a perfect patch of, of righteousness. Perfect love casts out fear. And when the perfect comes, the partial shall pass away. So this is what Christians don't get. It's that when we start walking on a path of, uh, of, of, of um, repentance, when we start walking a path of righteousness, uh, we then start seeing something in our lives um, where God starts breaking down strongholds and and demons and and um, and addictions and all of these things because what He's doing is He's examining our our fruits and He's saying I'm going to give this I'm going to give you deliverance 
because I see that you're striving with all your strength and your might and your 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 heart to do this, and that you're not going to go back. See, God doesn't want his 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 servants, his children, to to break away from him. And one of the ways he's going, he's not going to do that, is that if we're striving to to, to walk in godliness, and then he'll see that oh, maybe this guy really does um, want to live the, the righteous path. I'm going to give him grace, and I'm going to deliver him from the demonic spirits that are causing him destruction. Um, and part of that is that it also comes with um, it also comes with um, let me think of how it comes with with responsibility and part of that responsibility is that <clears throat> if we were to go back to our sin then the we would be um, plagued with seven times more wicked demons than the last um, and it's it's an interesting relationship we have with with Jesus and and the Father and the Holy Spirit is that the riddles of the Bible always lead back to to um, moving on with righteousness to to keep keep the path of of holiness we are supposed to be creatures of holiness we are supposed to be acting like God not acting like the devil so when we when we're uh, living in righteousness um, we are living a life that is like God but when we are sinning unrepentantly we are no longer living like God we are living like the devil so so this uh, so this separates us from uh, 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 this separates true followers of Christ from other religions because true followers of Christ have the love and power of God living and acting through uh, acting through us uh, we are made to be perfect images of, of godliness and God's likeness we are made to be vessels used by the Almighty Father himself um, and make no mistake you are a vessel you are supposed to be made to be a perfect vessel and whatever spirit we invite into our lives, that is the vessel that we host. So if you're flooding your, if you're not washing your cup out daily, um, and you're living in sin, what ends up happening is that your cup is dirty, and it's very difficult for God to work in and through you the way that he intended for you, your life. Basically, Jesus submitted his will to the Father per perfectly, acting as a perfect vessel for God. Um, and a uh, perfect vessel for, for God's power to live in and through him. So basically speaking, Jesus was dying on a cross, uh, and he, he bore the sins of, of the world, all the... E uh, all the evil he took inside of him because God and because God ca cannot be where evil is uh, where evil lives Jesus literally died for our sins so it was because of sin that Jesus bore that he died um, it wasn't I mean yeah he was crucified but he was on the cross for a while um, so this is why uh, this is why Jesus said in Matthew's uh, seven twenty seven, uh, sorry Matthew's twenty seven forty six, <clears throat> and about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, e "Eli, Eli, uh, lema, uh, lema uh, That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? <clears throat> um, and the basically God can't be 
where evil is. God can't be where sin is. God can't be in places of darkness. I mean, he can he knows all things, but where he indwells, where he uh, uh, when when he doesn't dwell in us, when he doesn't dwell in, in the spirit of God, uh, and sorry, in 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 in, in Jesus, uh, who was born of the Holy Spirit, and make no mistake, we as Christians can also be born of the Holy Spirit. So, this is what this is what I understand now. Actually, when I was writing this. Um, it made me understand that this is how much God loves us, that he literally had somebody die for our sins. It, he took on everything, all the demons, all everything, all of it. And it's very difficult to live physically being plagued by everything, uh, by all this wickedness. Um, and I can tell you it's true. It, you feel like you're dying. Um, and and it, you do feel like you're dying, but you're not, you know, and it's, it's a very, when, when, you, when you go through the Holy Spirit uh, uh, workings, when, when you start going through the desert, when, when uh, Jesus starts breaking you of those chains, it's like you're dying um, inside and you, and it's like, it's like everything is just like nothing is 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 um i don't know is it's is a hard feeling to describe and the only and people who live who've gone through that understand what that dying feeling feels like um so we we too must also strive to to be god's perfect vessel submitting our will perfectly just as jesus has submitted because we cannot live in a place of evil. Sorry, uh, but because God cannot live in a place of evil, we need to be a sacri uh, We need a sacrifice that cleans uh, us and washes us daily, morning and night, reinviting the Holy Spirit uh, to to indwell within our lives daily, striving to uh, to live in perfect repentance. Um. This is where the Holy Spirit, uh, this is where the Lord's Prayer comes in. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And uh, let's see. Um, let me see. So. Are the. So let's see. Blessed are the meek. Okay. So it says, uh, uh, this is Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So, when we are striving for righteousness, when we are submitting our will so much, um, God will give us everything. He will give us whatever our hearts desires as long as we're in line with God and his will. And this is why Christians strive for holiness, for the spiritual things of life. Because without God, we have nothing. You know, he gives us the desires of our hearts. He gives us things of magnitude beyond, above and beyond what we can ever imagine. And it's not about a cosmic slot machine. It's about... A relationship that we have with a father who is infinite in all things you know and it is that greatness of God that he is so content within himself that he can just keep giving and giving all day and the more we give to him the more he, and the more he gives back and he gives it back abundantly not just a little bit we can't out give God so the more you're giving him spiritually, the more you're giving him in submission of your will, the more you're giving him in in uh, your walk with him, the abundance of what he will be giving to you. And he, he will let the righteous eat the fruits of their deeds. Um, and that can come in so many different ways and so many different flavors. Um, 
So the kingdom of God is here, in us, around us. We are now, if you have been indwelled by the Holy Spirit fire, and and by the and and saved by the the Lord Jesus Christ, you will know that you also have access to heaven, just as the prophets of old did. They all have access to this heaven. We have access to this heaven. We're no different. We've never changed. You know, just uh, it's not. Paul, the Apostle Paul, Apostle John, uh, all of these prophets of old, they, they, they're no different than we are. They were just simple people that were used extraordinarily by God. That's it. They weren't special. They weren't some, they didn't have some, um, noble background god didn't care about that god is not a respecter of persons but he does love those who love and obey him and his son which because his son is the word he was also with moses during the writings of the ten commandments so why is it any different if jesus was with abraham isaac jacob and moses and he knew all of them and they were the quintessential pieces to writing the, uh, the the basic books of the Bible that we have today. How is it that, that Jesus is any different then than now? He's not. So um, why don't we continue on? Um, this way, uh, sorry. Um, So, uh, this is where the Lord's Prayer comes in. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To submit our will to the Father Jesus Christ means that we are living in obedience to God. Uh, who, who we be, obey uh, is our Lord Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit that lives in, in us, not just some letters of a book, but, living the, but a living word. So yes, God's word is living within us. We we could theoretically in God's kingdom live without a physical Bible. We should be able to, but it's because we have a Bible, because we have testimonies of old that we're able to analyze our lives and see, okay, how is my path according to what the Bible speaks of? You know, and so you're letting the Holy Spirit speak to you in and through the, the, the written letter of the law so that it can convict you so that you can live a holy and perfect life. Um, and, e and there are people all over the world who haven't even read the Bible, yet Jesus has come to them perfectly and giving them food, spiritual food regularly so no you don't need some bible you don't need to go down to barnes and noble and buy yourself an english standard translation a king james version and all of these things to be saved and to be living in the holy spirit you don't this is all completely by faith but it's but it's when we use when we when we digest knowledge you know wisdom that comes from people who have lived with god we are also then um gaining wisdom and knowledge in that capacity too on how they lived a righteous life we also live the same righteous life that they have lived and we hope to strive for that especially when we're we're living like jesus um so uh, when we do these things, we grow in spiritual maturity, and in this way, God entrusts us with greater spiritual things. But those whom God got, uh, but those whom much is given, much is required. So the more God gives you, and and entrusts you with, um, the more that is required required of you. So if you are delivered by sin. If you are delivered by 
addiction, then it is your responsibility, it is your responsibility to maintain righteousness, maintain um, the path of righteousness, because now, because God has given you deliverance, you have the responsibility that if you go back to your sin, you're going to be um, given seven more demons, more wicked than the last. And if God delivered you from a legion of demons, and you go back to your sin, may God have mercy on your soul, because it, it is, you be lucky if you, you have a second chance. And it has nothing to do with because God doesn't love you. No, God loves you very much. But because we are fleshly human beings, we cannot be saved on our own merits. We can't. And and it's, we are subject to the same evils that everyone else is. So think about this for a second. You, you trample on the foot of grace, and God says, if this is your God, I will let you have your God. So if your God is drinking, smoking, drugs, sexual addiction, um, reading a book that defiles the word of God, you know, um, it doesn't mean that we can't have knowledge, but if we're not going to God for, for further wisdom, when we read the book, when we read the Holy Bible, when we, when we, um, when we're reading outside of God's, when we're outside of God's commandment, we are subjected to the same things, it's the same evils that everyone else is. So it doesn't matter whether you are born again Christian or you are a Satanist. You are still subject to the same evils if you are not following in line with God's direction for your life, and that is living godly. Um, so it is those who live a righteous life are are able to um, keep those doors, those say, those those doors that could leave us open to attacks. And this is where the spiritual armor comes in. We have uh, the breastplate of righteousness. When we walk in righteousness, our breastplate is what protects us. Our heart, it protects our heart. Think about it. Where it's placed is our heart. So we have the breastplate of righteousness. But those who don't have the spirit of the sword, the spirit of the word, and we're wielding that that sword. Uh, if we're not wielding the sword around, but we only have the breastplate of righteousness, oh boy, you're be, you're still able to be attacked by the demons because you don't have the knowledge. The knowledge is a sword, you know. Um, so the breastplate is is what protects us because we're living in righteousness. It's not. It's something that balances. You have to have the entire armor of God. And when you go before God and your armor is all messed up, your robe isn't perfectly, it, your robe isn't being cleaned on a day's, daily basis, you can't go out into battle and think that every day I'm going to wear the same armor and not clean it and not take care of it. That That's just foolishness. How would you go to, to battle day in and day out and not prepare for battle, not sharpening your sword, not making sure that your breastplate is is right, so that when it does get strike stricken by by arrows and 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 uh, spears, that it can't be penetrated. You're just being foolish, you know. Uh, and those who think that oh, but God forgave me, like how foolish are you? That, yeah, God did forgive you. But where is your righteousness? Where is your walk with God? So, this is a prayer. And, and I, I hope that everyone prays this. So, if you are praying, pray this with me. Um, so, Father, uh, and I'll pray this. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ and of the Holy Spirit fire, I ask you, Jesus, use your rod of correction in my life. Send me the Helper who is the Holy Spirit. Please forgive me of my 
my transgressions as I forgive those who transgressed against me. Jesus, Jesus Christ, please baptize me in the Holy Spirit fire so that I may walk in the path of righteousness, of the truth uh, uh, that comes from the Father in, in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for your, your perfect love. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood that you have shed for me that washes me clean. Father, in the name of Jesus uh, Christ and of the Holy Spirit fire, I repent and renounce all covenants that I have made with the evil with the evil one and all uh, made with evil and all error that has caused me deception in my life and I ask you Jesus to break all bonds upon my life thank you Jesus thank you uh, thank you father for allowing your son Jesus Christ for dying for my sins thank you Jesus for your Holy Spirit and thank you Holy Spirit for living in and through me in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen and so and with that I'll say thank you and and uh, God bless everyone for watching all right amen